Have you ever thought about whether fields that are quite different, like architecture and tango, can turn out to be so similar? Maybe. And maybe after leaving this auditorium, you will start to link them. Well, to be an architect, you have to be an artist. To be a creative artist, you have to be passionate. And you cannot be a passionate dancer without embracing both. I'm a firm believer that pathways don't go individually. Everything is connected, and every field has a powerful impact on the other. Let's see this harmony between architecture and tango, and I will start with foundation. These basic geometric forms for foundation, the circle, triangle, and square, draw the basic steps of tango too. And if you, if you look at this image, you will see the triangle traced in this colgada and in this volcada. As for the circle, it draws the line of dance. The line of dance is circle, and dancers have to move counterclockwise in order to keep the way free for everyone, and like that, we avoid traffic and accidents. Second, axis is a term architects and dancers should consider. You know, an architecture should stand on columns. And a tanguero or a tanguera should be on his or her axis. Rules are great, right? But breaking them even isn't better. Look at this beautiful out of axis move. It's adding astonishing figures to the dance as this portafoto, this architecture. And the school of, out of structure, out of axis structure, doesn't look exactly like this uh, posture. Third is a space, and it's the most important element that should be highly respected. You know the chaos when we build in a space without respecting the surrounding environment? It's the same way when dancers on the dance floor, by ignoring other, they will also create chaos. And believe me, we might see blood flowing on the dance floor. And most obviously, the sexy pedicure are wrong. And it's awful. <laughs> well, let's see other similarities. Frank Gehry, known for his dynamic architecture, and if you look at this, you see like, the voleos, the gonchos, like you can figure out later on after maybe our performance. And the most obvious of all is his dancing house in Prague that looks exactly like this posture. And his contorted building is like torsion, a move that we always see in dance and tango. We also have parallelism, like here and here and also here, in a horizontal way. As for this embrace, I see that Zaha Hadid expressed it in a very beautiful way in these towers. Well, I won't mention everything now. We'll leave it to your curiosity and imagination after my talk. But I would like to talk about a last common point today, and my absolute favorite, it's minimalism. Minimalism in architecture and in tango and interior is beauty, simplicity, and elegance. It's using less to do more. Similarly, beauty, simplicity, and elegance are in tango without the overblown embellishment as these acrobats doing here. And trust me, you don't want to see her doing the steps. <laughs> so that's the music and not the steps. I'll add something. Horizontal and vertical lines brought with harmony and rhythm become a work of art, Mondrian said. And just a simple walk, synchronizing four elements, leader, follower, dance floor, and music can make the best of a dance, believe me. And let me tell you one more thing. Have you, like probably you've heard many quotes about tango, 
One of them is it takes two to tango. But this is only half the story. Just like the four elements in nature, and very, very essential for architecture, the tango must have the connection to earth, the fluidity of water, the lightness of air, and the energy of fire.